Hello ladies and gentlemen, in this video we're going to do something exciting, compiling our first C++ program. Now it's not going to be too difficult, uh, but there is a sequence of steps that you need to follow and I'll walk you through it and explain what's going on so that way you have a greater understanding of the process and can adapt it to your needs. Now I'm assuming that you already have the GCC compiler already installed. So if you don't and you're on Mac OS, check out my previous video which I linked to on how to do that. If you're on Windows, I recommend installing MinGW W64 uh, and I have a link to that installer. It's pretty easy to set up doesn't really require a video. Uh, if you're on Linux, um, then you should be pretty set up or know how to do that um, from your uh, setup as well. This process will work for all these operating systems. Now, we're gonna use the command line, so if you're unfamiliar with the command line, please check out my quick uh, start video on how to do some basic commands with the command line. That's all you'll need to know. Um, and then we're gonna go through the process of writing our program compiling it, which will translate it to what uh, the computer can understand and can be run, and then running that program. We'll also look at some common errors and how to interpret them and see what you need to fix in your code. As you can see here, I'm in the command line in Windows. Now this tutorial will also work for Mac OS or even Linux, um, but I'm just demonstrating it in Windows. And I've got the run terminal command, which in Windows, uh, this command line is the one that has access to our compiler. So make sure that at the top here, it says run terminal if you're in Windows. And I'm gonna just go to uh, the folder where I wanna put my new program. So we're gonna compile our code and put it somewhere on my computer. I'm gonna put that into uh, my home folder, which is users s -Hays. We'll do CD to change directory and we'll go to that location. Um, obviously yours will be different. You won't have s -Hays. Um I'm gonna mkdir for make a directory, make a new folder uh, for this class. If you have already done this, um, then it'll already be there and you can just change into that as well. And um, right now I don't have any files in here. So if I type dir, you see um, there's nothing listed here. There's just a dot and dot dot, no zero files. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new folder for our first program. Make directory, uh, make a new folder. And I'm just gonna call this one first program. And I'm not gonna use any spaces in this. That way I don't have to use double quotes. Um, so now I'm in the first program folder and here I'm going to open up a new editor So I've installed on my computer Visual Studio Code and uh, you should install it on yours. It's a free program It's lightweight. It's a nice hackable editable very customizable um, Text editor for programming and it works with all different types of languages. You may have heard of Visual Studio. That's a large uh, Integrated development environment. It does a great job uh, for programming um, in C++ especially on Windows um, But we're just going to use Visual Studio Code for this class and to open it you can just type code that will launch Visual Studio Code and this is what you see if you open it for the first time. There's actually a little checkbox, show welcome page on startup. You can uncheck that if you don't wanna see this welcome, um, but it's fine for now. Um, you can just exit out if you want to. Um, now, if you typed code and you're on Mac and you didn't see uh, that pop up, then it may mean that you need to install the shell command for code. Um, and what you can do is just open up Visual Studio Code the normal Mac way, like you would any Ma app. You know, you just go to the apps folder and uh, click on it there um, or wherever you've installed it. And uh, once you're in Visual Studio Code like this, um, then you can type Control Shift P. And this opens up the command palette where you can run different commands and just start typing shell command. And uh, you'll see something that says um, install code command in path. That will be what you want to type and hit enter. Uh, click on and hit enter and that will allow you to um, just type code like this from the command line for it to open up Visual Studio Code. Now you can also do file new here and then you've got a new text document and you can save that and store your code in there. Um, but you can also do that from the command line. So I'm um, just showing the command line way um, as we're learning that. So you can type code and the name of the file you want to open. If it doesn't exist yet, you'll create it. So let's create hello.cpp. All your C++ programs need to end in .cpp and preferably there's no spaces in the file name. And so we'll type code hello.cpp because we're gonna create a program that says hello hit enter and it'll pop up with a new C++ uh, program that we can then type our code into. You notice it's not saved because it's got a circle here and uh, there's one unsaved file here. So if I go to file, save, 
it'll save that file. So just reiterating that. And if this pops up, you can install it if you'd like uh, the C++ extensions. It's probably a good idea. I'm not going to do it right now. Let's first type a comment. Now a comment, a multi-line comment starts with slash star. And so everything you type after that is a comment. So um, this is a comment. And then you can end it with the opposite, star slash. And this needs to be a forward slash here. It's always important to start your programs with a pro comment that describes what they do and with your name, give yourself credit. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put one that says displays the message, hello world, uh, to the screen, um, and then it's by me, Dr. Hayes. Um, so do something like that on all of your code. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start writing my program. Um, now the simplest C++ program is just int main, that's our main function, and then curly bracket, closing curly bracket, and then just return zero semicolon. This program just exits, that's all it does. So return zero, that says exit successfully. Before we exit, we wanna add a little bit of code to display a message. Now in order to do that, we're gonna add a couple lines of code, which you'll know what they mean shortly, but for now, just include them in all your programs. Uh, pound include IO stream using namespace std colon. Now it's important that you match that exactly. That'll allow us to get input and output. So we can output a message to the screen. And then we're gonna do C out, because we're gonna output less than less than, and then something in double quotes. And whatever you put here is what's gonna show up on the screen. So I'm gonna put hello world, exclamation point, and then end L, end L's for new line. So end of the line, um, L here, this is an L, not a one. And that's it, that's, uh, that's our program. I might um, add a comment here. This is a single line comment that just says display message. So if you put slash slash, that's a comment that's just a single line of code. So anything after it is commented out. I could put one here too. Um, comment, uh, you don't need to. So let's save it. So you could go to file, save, or I'm just gonna hit control S. So you can see it was saved. Now, if you don't see the syntax highlighting, so if you don't see the different colors here, if it's all white text, that probably means you didn't end with .cpp as your file extension. So just bear that in mind. I'm gonna clear the screen so that we have a, a clean screen. CLS in Windows or clear, uh, type it all the way out in Mac OS or Linux. Here's the simplest command to compile your code. Now I'm going to um, recommend that you do more than this. Uh, so keep watching, don't just always do this, but G++ is the name of our compiler. And then we're gonna type the name of the program. And note that I start typing it and I just hit tab, it'll auto complete the name. So that's really a helpful thing to speed up the process of typing things. All right, this is the simplest way. If I do that and I hit enter, and you don't see any output, that means it worked. If it didn't work, you'd see an error message. Now if I type dir in Windows or ls on Mac OS, you can see we've got a new file, it's this a.exe, or on Mac, you would see a.out. Um, so if I wanna run that, I can just type a, or on Mac, I would type um, dot forward slash a.out. Um, but since I'm on Windows, I'm just gonna type a. And you can see, hello world shows up. And so that is what our program did. And then it exited uh, with that return zero. So that is the simplest way to do it. I'm gonna go ahead and delete DELA.exe, uh, our compiled program, because we're gonna compile it a different way. And if you're on uh, Mac, you would type RM A.out, or, or maybe you'd have to do dot forward slash A.out. Um, so that's how you delete something. So now if I type dir, notice A.exe is not there anymore. All right, I'm gonna clear the screen again, CLS or clear on Mac. We're gonna type G++ again, but I'm gonna add this command W extra with a capital W. This parameter you should always put in your compiler um, because it gives you really helpful information. Now, a compiler will show you error messages, um, but if you don't have this, it may not show you warnings. Uh, and so this says, I want extra warnings to show up. A warning is something that technically can compile and run, so it's not an error, but it's something that's probably wrong. 99.99% of the time it is wrong. So this lets the compiler tell you, you did something wrong and you need to fix it and gives you some hints on what that would be, um, even if it isn't an error. So add that, and we're also gonna add dash O. Now, the O here is for output. So whatever you put after dash O is gonna be the name of the thing. And so instead of being uh, a.exe um, or a.out, it'll um, be whatever you put here. Um, and so that's helpful. It's a good idea to name your output. So I'm gonna put hello, uh, just so it's named the same as the output um, and hello.cpp. Um, 
because that's the thing we're compiling. So the last thing that we put here is just going to be the name of the program we're compiling. So that's a little bit longer line of code. Um, no errors, no uh, no output. If you do get errors, uh, keep watching. I'm going to talk about how to uh, figure out what to do if you see errors in just a minute. Um, so now if I type in um, dir or ls and mac, um, you can see I've got a hello.exe. And so um, I can type in hello and run the program hello world and again if you're on mac do dot forward slash hello um, and that would work just as well that's a great way to compile and we didn't get any warnings so we are more confident that our program uh, not only displayed the right output but is, is working correctly another command that you might see me type in i'm just going to press if you press the up arrow it'll cycle through your previous commands so you don't have to retype all this over and over again um, sometimes i'll put dash std equals uh, maybe C++ 17. So this says, I want to use the C++ 17 standard, um, which is um, a newer standard of C++. Sometimes you need to use a newer standard of C++ in order to take advantage of the features you're using in your program. Um, if you don't include that, it'll just default to whatever the standard is that your compiler uh, does by default. Um, so you'll see me do that in some of my videos. Uh, it's not required usually unless uh, there's something in particular we're pointing out that's brand new to the programming language. C++ is getting constantly updated, which is a nice thing because um, we get more features. Most of the stuff we do in this beginner stuff is available in C++ from, uh, quite, for quite a while. I can compile my code again uh, just by hitting enter and I can run hello uh, to run it again. Now, let me show you what happens if there's um, an error. A very common error you might see, uh, not in your code, but just in how you put this, um, is you might forget uh, to put the name of your output file. So if I just don't put hello twice here, um, then it looks like the name of the output is hello.cpp. That's the name of my input and I don't have any input. So if you see that it says fatal error, no input files, um, make sure you add hello that's a very common beginner mistake or whatever you want to name it you can call it world um, so if i do that um, then if i type in dir a world exe file that i just created so whatever you type here is what it saves the executable that you can run uh, the program with afterwards let me show you what an uh, error in your code might look like um, so it's very common for beginners to change this end l to be an end one um, and so if you type that if i hit Control s to save it I'm going to clear the screen uh, and I'm going to compile it again with um, all this information. Um, I get an error and this is what an error looks like. Error in hello.cpp end one was not declared in this scope um, and it shows me the line of code where the error is and it points to where that error is and then it makes a recommendation. So it says maybe you meant enum. Now we didn't mean enum. So note here this says the error is on line 12 and 28 characters over on that line. If I go back to my code you can see on line 12, I've got line numbers on the left. That's in fact where my error is, and I can change it to um, endl. So that's just one example of an error. I hit Control S, so if I flip back, um, now I can clear the screen, recompile it, and you can see no uh, no errors, which means it worked. And I can type world to run the, the latest compiled thing. Hello world. That's pretty much the basics of it. That's um, really all it takes. Um, in the next video, we'll write a little more complicated program. Not too complicated, but we'll do a little bit of math. We'll get some input from the user. We'll be able to do a little bit more with it. Um, so I hope you enjoy it. Again, let me know if you have any questions.